Recently, I've watched a few ACDC webinars and noticed that sharpening's raising a lot of questions. Today, I'll be demonstrating how sharpening works in ACDC and in a way that you can apply it to other packages. Hello, I'm Robin Waldy. Welcome to Lenscraft. After watching a few ACD webinars recently, a lot of people seem to be really struggling with correctly sharpening their images. In the first part of this video, I'll explain each of the sharpening tools in ACDC before looking at how to apply them in practice. Once you understand the tools, you'll find you have complete control over sharpening any photograph. If you want to download this sharpening wedge that I'll be using, I've put a copy on my website in the YouTube practice images. I'll include a link to the page in the YouTube video information. Currently, I'm in the ACDC develop module, which is where you would typically convert raw files. The module has a lot of adjustment controls and they're arranged into four tabs along the top. You'll find the sharpening tools we want to use are under the detail tab. Just above the sharpening controls, you can see a small section of the image that's been magnified to 100% or 1 to 1. You can move the magnified area by clicking and dragging, or you can click and drag this small rectangle on the main image preview. Sharpening works by increasing the contrast between pixels that are next to each other. This means that dark pixels become darker and light pixels become lighter, which makes them easier to distinguish. ACDC decides which pixels are dark or light using midtone grey as a reference point. If a pixel is darker than a midtone grey, it's considered dark, and if it's lighter, it's light. The only pixels not affected by the sharpening are the ones that are a midtone grey. To apply this contrast sharpening to the image, use the amount slider. As we increase the amount slider, it increases how dark or light the sharpened pixels become. At higher level, dark pixels could even turn black and light pixels turn white. To help you see what's happening, I'll zoom my image preview up to 1 to 1 magnification. Notice the edge between the two strips becomes more defined as I increase the strength of the sharpening. If I zoom to 200% magnification, you can see a little bit better the pixels beginning to turn black and white along the edge. This is a sharpening halo. Now you've probably heard lots of photographers saying that sharpening halos are bad, but that's not entirely correct. If you don't have a sharpening halo, you won't see the sharpening effect. The trick is to make sure that the halo doesn't become obvious and easy to spot. One way to do this is to reduce the level of the contrast adjustment applied by reducing the amount slider. Another is to use the radius slider. When ACDC applies sharpening along an edge, it needs to know how wide an area to enhance. That's what the radius slider is controlling. If I increase the radius to something like 10, you can see its effect more clearly. It's now enhancing the edge between the strips by up to 10 pixels. If I reduce this to 1, you can see the effect's now much narrower, but it exaggerates the contrast adjustment. That's because there's a smaller width to apply the contrast adjustment across. In other words, it's not being blended effectively into the image, so you still notice it even though it's very narrow. If I set the radius to something like 10 and the amount to 100, you can see it blends differently to when the radius is 1. Now let's look at the detail slider. As the name suggests, this slider targets the sharpening onto fine details in the image. Now watch the edge between the strip as I move the detail slider left and right. How much detail sharpening you need depends on the level of fine detail you want to enhance in the image. Each image is going to be different and require a different level of sharpening. You might also find that you want to enhance this in some images but not in others. You need to make that decision based on the effect you're trying to achieve. There isn't a magic formula number to use. Now whilst I've zoomed in on the image, you may have noticed that there's an interference pattern across the gradient. That's because ACDC is applying sharpening to individual pixels within the gradient. Fortunately, we can control this behaviour using the mask slider. This allows us to restrict the sharpening so it's just on the edges in the image. If I hold down the ALT key as I move the mask slider, you can actually see the mask that's being created. 
At zero, the entire mask is white, meaning the sharpening is applied to every pixel across the image. As I move it to the right, notice what's happening. Where the mask is black, there's no sharpening applied, and where it's white, there's full sharpening. The grey areas you see show that some sharpening's being applied there. If I increase the mask slider to around 15, it's now only sharpening the main edge in the image. When I release the Alt key, you can see that the interference pattern's now gone from the gradient, but we're still sharpening the image. If you wonder why I keep talking about edges, it's because the software is trying to detect edges and sharpen those. That's the basic principle behind sharpening. If you increase the contrast along an edge, you make the edge easier to see, and the image appears sharper. The way it detects these edges is by comparing pixels that are next to each other to find where there's a contrast difference. How much difference there needs to be before extra sharpening is applied is controlled by the threshold slider. As you move the threshold slider to the right, there needs to be a greater and greater difference to apply the sharpening. Watch what happens either side of the central area of the strip where there's limited sharpening. As I move the threshold slider to the right, the unsharpened area becomes wider. Everything we've discussed so far is what we call capture sharpening. It's the sharpening we apply to an image to compensate for the softening effect of the lenses and digital capture. But there's another type of sharpening that we can apply called creative sharpening. We apply this selectively to areas of an image to sharpen or blur them. If I open the develop brush in ACDC, I can use it to select the central part of the strip. Because I'm in the detail tab of the develop module, the develop brush now has a sharpen control. I can use this to increase the level of sharpening in the selected area. If I move it in the other direction though, it reduces the sharpening and at higher levels it'll even blur the detail. Now we've covered all the tools, let's apply them to a real image. I shot this image in Death Valley and there's a lot of fine detail in it that I want to sharpen. I'll start by increasing the amount slider to make the main image detail appear sharper. Next, I'll see if I need to change the radius. A radius of 2 appears to work quite well for this image. Next, I'll check the detail slider, because there's a lot of fine details here that I want to enhance. If I look around the image, I can see some areas of the image are looking a little bit grainy and gritty, which is probably because I'm sharpening everything. To fix this, I can use the mask slider to restrict the sharpening to just the edges. Finally, I've got some areas with quite similar tones that I don't really want to be over sharpened. I'll therefore remove the sharpening in those areas with the threshold slider. When I turn the sharpening off and on, you can see the difference that it's making. That's the capture sharpening applied for this image. If I wanted to take this further, I could then apply selective sharpening to highlight areas like the paths or the deep crevices. I hope this video has helped clear up some of the confusion around sharpening. If you found it useful, please share it. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you next week for another video.